Hello students, welcome back to online learning. Today we shall do the 8th chapter that is states after the Maurya Empire. Okay, so let us start. In the last class you have done the Mauryan Empire. Okay, India during the Mauryan period, Maurya period in which we learned about the Emperor Greek Emperor Alexander. Okay, and we learned about the Maurya Empire. Today we shall do the states after the Maurya Empire. Okay boys. Boys, look at this picture. The picture which is in grey colour was the entire part which was under the control of the Mauryan Empire. Okay. So, today what are we going to do? We are going to learn special features. Okay. We are going to learn about special dynasties that was there after the Mauryan Empire which ruled India. Clear. Now, which are, what are we going to cover up today? Let us look that also. Today we will be doing the Shunga dynasty, Indo-Greek kings, Kushana kings, the Gupta dynasty, the Vardhan dynasty, powers in northeast India. Okay. After the Mauryan Empire, these were the dynasties which were which ruled India during the fourth to sixth century. Okay. So we are going to do this all these six dynasty one after the other. Okay. Starting with the first one, the Shunga dynasty. After Emperor Ashoka, Maurya power started declining. The last Maurya emperor was called Bhridharat. The Maurya general Pashumitra Shunga revolted against Bhridharat, 
killed him and became the king himself okay so the last king of the mauryan empire was called what bridarad now who is the other one the shunga king that is Push, uh, pashumitra okay maurya general pashumitra shunga revolted against bridarad killed him and became the king himself okay that is how they came into power the shunga dynasty came into power okay boys Now we shall look into the second dynasty which came into power and that is Indo-Greek kings. During this period, there was a several small kingdoms ruled by Greek kings to the northwest of Indian subcontinent. Those kings are known as Indo-Greek kings. In the history of the coins of ancient India, the coins of these kings are very important. They had a tradition of putting the picture of the king on one side and the deity and that of the deity on the other side. This tradition later looked, took root in India. One of the famous Indo-Greek kings was Manindra, who discussed Buddhist philosophy with the Buddhist bhikkhu, Nagasena. Manindra is also referred to as Milinda. The question that he discussed with bhikkhu, Nagasena, led to the creation of the book Milind Panha. The Pali word Panha means question. So during this period, my dear boys, there were very, very several small kingdoms that was ruled by the Greek powers. Okay, or the Greek kings ruled many small kingdoms in the northwest of India. Okay, Indian subcontinent. Now, the Greek Indo-Greek, the Greek people had the practice of what you know, they used to have a coin, coin for trade purpose. Now, on that in that coin, on one side there would be the picture of the king, and on the other side there would be the picture of the deity. Deity around over here means the god. Okay, now this tradition later took root in India. Then after as Indo, as the Greek people started coming down to this Indian subcontinent in the north, northwest part of, of India, okay, and had a ruling. So their practice was followed in India also. So the kings in India also started using, making coins. On one side, they would be having the picture of the king, the ruling king, whoever is the ruling king. And on the other side, they would be having the picture of the deity. This is from where did we practice this? From where did we get this practice of making this coin in this manner? From the Greek people. Okay. Now, uh, there was one of the famous Indo-Greek king was Manindra. Okay. Now, Manindra, he was he who discussed Buddhist who discussed Buddhist philosophy with Buddhist bhikkhus. Now, in the last class, I told you, you know, Buddhist bhikkhu, who are, who are this bhikkhu? Bhikkhus are the priests, okay? Buddhist priests around over here. So, Manindra, what did he do? He discussed the philosophy, Buddhist philosophy with Buddhist bhikkhus, Nagasena. What is the name of the person? Nagasena. Manindra is also referred to as Milanda. What is Manindra? The name of the mother person. The, it is also referred to Milanda. Now, what did he do? The question that he discussed with the Buddhist, uh, Buddhist Bhikkhu Nagasena, those are being compiled together and written in a book, in a book form. Okay. And that book is called Milind Panha. What is it called? Milind Panha. The Pali word for Panna means questions. Whatever questions he had asked the Buddhist Bhikkhu Nagasena, all that have been compiled together and it has been made into a book form. Okay, and that is said to be Milind Panna. Milind is what Manind Manindra's questions, in short. Okay, for what he got the answers from the Buddhist Bhikkhu Nagasena. Now you can even see over there the silver coin of Manindra, both sides. Okay, one side you had the picture of the king, and other side you had you have the picture of the deity that was present at that moment of time. That means this is also practiced in India. Okay, boys.
now we come to the next uh, king that is the after the indo greek king we are going to learn about kushana kings okay after the uh, greek people the kushana kings ruled india india was invaded from time to time by several tribes the kushanas were one such tribe from central asia they established their rule in the northwestern region and in kashmir in the first century ce the kushana kings were the first to start minting of gold coins in india they started the custom of putting the images of gautam buddha and different indian deities on the coin the kushana king kanishka extended their empire okay now what do you find over kushana king india was invaded by whom several times people came to india invaded india ruled india okay one among them was such a tribe kushana okay now the kushanas were what they were the tribe from which central asia middle part okay central asia yeah, they established the rule in the north western region of jammu and kashmir or kashmir okay just don't take jammu and kashmir just kashmir and in which century first century ce now they were the first to start minting gold coins what is minting minting means you know uh, on a uh, on a metal thing you are going to inscribe okay you are going to uh, inscribe the entire picture image around over there they were the first one to use gold coins in india okay otherwise you only had coins being used uh, met, uh, metal was not very important but here you find they are they are the first the kushana kings were the first people first kings to use gold coins in india for the trade purposes okay they started the custom of putting the images of whom now these people the kushana kings what did they do they started the putting the images of gautam buddha okay and different indian deities on the coins on one side you will be having the picture of gautam buddha and on the other side you will be having the picture of the of any of the deity of india okay the kushana king kanishka extended their empire okay now who is kanishka we look at the next slide okay the emperor named kanishka was a person who actually expanded the entire kingdom of entire kingdom of kushana dynasty or the kushana kingdom okay was during the period when they ruled india okay this tribe ruled india now from where were these tribe coming these tribes were coming from which part of the country they were coming central asia and they entered where northwest region okay the northwest region of kashmir they came they settled down over there and they started their uh, administration from there okay one emperor famous emperor of the kushana kings or the kushana dynasty was emperor kanishka we will do in the next slide okay so till here you all are clear my dear boys we have done the shunga dynasty in the indo greek kings and now we have come to kushana kings